Hello everybody, this is a review of the Hobbymate HB120AC Duo Charger. The power input for this charger is either 110 volts AC or 220 volts AC. Or on this side, you have a DC 11 to 18 volts input. That would be useful for hooking up to your car battery. It is 120 watts times 2 power that equates to a charge capability of between 0.1 up to 12 amps and that's per channel. This is two channel charger. It has a discharge capability of between 0.1 and 5 amps but for a total for the whole charger of 20 watts. It has a balanced discharge current of 500 milliamps per cell. It is fully compatible with all modern battery chemistries including lithium polymer, lithium iron, lithium ion in lithium high voltage cells also is compatible with NICADs, nickel metal hydrides and lead acid batteries. So let's see what's included in the package. First off we have two balance and charge leads. These are identical. These are got four millimeter banana plugs and Deans on the other end. We have two balance port adapters. We have one XT60 adapter. This can be used either as a charge lead or can be put in for your DC power input. Of course you have your AC power plug and you have a detailed instruction manual that goes through all the different features available on the charger. So when I received this charger, it had this sticker right over the top of the power input right like this. And so it says, warning, please make sure you switch your input to 115 volts. So what they're saying here is, if you want to have it on 115 volts, you need to make sure it says 115 here. It could be switched over here to the 230 volt. You, we don't want to use that inside the United States. We want to read 115. So make sure it's like that before you plug it in. So let's go ahead and plug it in and take a look at the menu. So this first button is the battery type. You also notice it says stop below it. We have decrement and increment and start and this also says status arrows and enter. So you'll see that the buttons on this side are identical to the buttons on this side. So this is for channel one and this is for channel two. So if we press the battery type button, then we can increment through the different types of batteries. So we first see here it says LiPo and lithium ion then lithium iron then lithium high voltage and now we have a battery meter and I'll show you that in a minute and this is the system setup and then we have a battery memory and then we have lead acid we have NICAD nickel metal hydride and then we're back to LiPo so you can go through them or backwards either way you want to go so so let's take a closer look on some of these items Let's move over here to system set. As you can see here, for some battery chemistries, you can set the charge and discharge rest time. In this case, it's set for 10 minutes. You have the safety timer. This will be how long your battery charger operates before it shuts down automatically. It'll be 120 minutes. This would be the longest duration it would run. You can turn that, you can increase that if we want. And turn it on and off. And then we can increase the time. I'll go ahead and put it back. We have the capacity cutoff at 5,000 milliamp hours. I'm going to go ahead and increase that. I want to keep that on, but I'm going to increase it because I charge some pretty big batteries. I'll make that about 12,000. And we'll move on. This is the key beep and buzzer 
we'll leave those on. We have the input voltage low. So if you had this hooked up to like say your car battery and you wanted to make sure it shut down if it was draining too much out of your car battery over a long day of flying, you could set this uh, to shut off the charger automatically if the input voltage got too low. And then you have internal temperature and external temperature. So this has a temperature monitor inside it to monitor that and it'll, it'll shut down if it gets too hot. Um, I've never had a problem with it, but it also has temperature sensors inputs that you hear on the front that you can connect up your battery pack. Those are sold separately, but that's where the, the external temperature would be read from. Moving on. And then we have the very last menu item is the load factory defaults. And we have the version, the firmware version. And that's it. So should be able to go back here. We have battery memory. This is where we can set up battery memory, where if you say you charge this particular type of battery often and you want to set up to be able to change the configuration on that battery quickly, uh, you can set that up in here. Go back out. And now we're back to our battery chemistries. So let's charge a battery. Okay, so the way you would hook this up is you would plug the leads in, hook up the battery. I always like to hook up the battery first before hooking up the balance board. And then you, this is a three cell battery, so you would use the three cell connector. All right, so that's all hooked up. And this is a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, three cell. So what you would do to charge one C at, for a 4,200 milliamp hour battery, that is to charge at 4.2 amps. So we would hit start here we would change it to 4.2 amps then hit start again change it to 3 cell press start again hold it down it's checking battery it's asking me to verify that it's a 3 cell it is and now it starts charging. So it shows you the current battery voltage, charge voltage right here. It shows the amount of time it's been charging. It shows the amount of charge current. It shows that it's a LiPo 3 cell. And this is the amount of milliamps that's put into the battery as we've been charging it. So if you press increment here, you can see the individual cell voltages for each one of the three cells. And then you can go back and see now it's charging at 4.2 amps. So I'll stop this and we'll take a look at the different features within the LiPo balance. So this is LiPo balance. This is the one I use the most. You also have standard LiPo charge, which is not balancing. You have LiPo fast charge, which cuts off some of the very last little bit of the charge. Charging works for the first part of the charge. It's called constant current charge. And that's why you saw it was reading 4.2 amps and you see the voltage going up. The current is constant. When it gets to the, when it gets to the final voltage, in which case for a three cell is 12.6 volts, it'll go into constant voltage. And at that point, you'll start seeing the current start coming down. But the voltage will remain the same. You never want to charge a battery over its nominal voltage. So with that, on fast charge, it cuts off some of the time on the constant voltage portion of the charge. So moving on, you have LiPo storage. LiPo storage will discharge your batteries until each cell has a voltage of 3.85 volts, which is ideal for, for storage. You have LiPo discharge here, and it's a similar function to LiPo storage, where it discharges the battery to a, to a particular value per cell. And you're back around to LiPo balance. So you have exactly the same menu functions for channel one that we've been looking at also available to you on channel two. So in my opinion, the three main selling points behind this charger is that first of all, it's dual channel. 
you essentially have two chargers in one. Secondly, it's powered via AC and DC. Every charger is available for DC, but just a handful of chargers are capable of AC. And the third item is, it has very high power. There's a 300 watt power supply inside this charger that's feeding the power to both sides of the charger, 120 watts each. With this, it allows you to do some things that you can't do on lesser chargers. So let's go over the computer and I'll explain it a little bit more. So what I've done here is create a table that shows number of cell counts in the first column, max apps in the second column, and I calculated in the other columns the total batteries per particular size, looking at 1300, 2200, and 4200 milliamp hour batteries, how many each charger, the Hobbymate 240 watt charger or a generic 50 watt charger, how many batteries of each size each charger could charge if you were charging multiple packs in parallel. I'll show you how to hook up batteries in parallel in the video in just a moment. So what you see here is that the Hobbymate charger in parallel charging configuration can charge up to 18 1300 single cell packs and skipping down to 3 cell it can charge up to 15 and looking at 4 cell it can charge up to 11 all simultaneously. Looking over at the 50 watt charger the most it could charge simultaneously would be about 5 cells for a single cell pack or for a 3 cell pack you would only charge 3 simultaneously or four only two. So we're comparing the difference for the Hobbymate charger can charge up to 11 packs of this 1300 mill milliamp hour size at the same time as compared to only two of the 50 watt charger. As you go up in battery size you can see here that the generic 50 watt charger really gets limited very quickly whereas with the Hobbymate charger you still can simultaneously charge in parallel these larger packs and these larger cell counts. So when you take that in consideration, the 240 watts and how much that cost per watt really cost you, this is a good metric to understand the value of the charger. So the Hobbymate charger is around $120 and the cost per watt for that for the 240 watts is a total of 50 cents per watt. So whereas the generic 50 watt charger cost about $50, and that 50 watts cost you about a dollar per watt. You can see here that the value of the Hobbymate charger is almost twice that of the 50 watt charger. So let me show you how to get the most out of a powerful charger like this. So here are my QAV 210 quadcopter batteries. So I picked up a couple of these balanced charging boards from Amazon. These run around $12 to $13 each. So how you hook it up is you take out the supplied single balance board and you plug in the multiple balance board, plug in the charge lead, Now you plug in each one of the batteries. Now what's important here is that when you plug them in, when you do this, you have to use batteries of all the same cell count. In this case, these are four cell batteries. You can't mix three in with four, and you can't mix five in with four, or, or two in with four. They all have to be the same cell count. Absolutely have to be this way. The other thing that's important is that the voltage on these have to be relatively close to each other. They say that the app, to be safe, you want to be between 0.1 and 2.2 volts per cell. So on a four cell battery, that's between 0.4 volts and 0.8 volts. All these packs I have are well within that range of each other. So you plug each pack in using the charge or the, the main lead first. And the reason you do that is if there is slight little differences in the batteries, then they equalize as you're plugging them in before you plug in the balance leads. The balance leads are small and they can't handle a lot of current so you always plug in the main first. So 
now you plug in each balance lead just making sure you plug them into the four cell connections there we go so now as I said these are 1300 milliamp hour cells so we have 4 times 1300 milliamp hours for a 1C charge that would be 5.2 amps. So we would hit start here and increase it to 5.2 amps. Hit start again and now we go over to the cell count. We were charging a 3 cell before, we'll change this to 4 cell. We press start. We hold down start confirms that we're going to be charging four cell batteries press start again now all these are charging all at the same time and what it would have taken to charge this one pack we're gonna have four completed in that time and we can hit the increase button here and we can see the voltages that's being measured on each of the cells. So all the all the first cells in each pack are all tied tied together in parallel. The second cell in each pack is all tied together in parallel, and so on. There we are. Back to the screen. So right now we have 15.17 volts on all the packs, and you'll see that increasing again. Remembering this is the constant current portion of the charge and that's eventually that'll be 16.8 for four cells and in which case the current will start coming down. So as I mentioned I have a second balance board as well and the reason I bought two is because this charger is dual channel. So I can hook up the second one And if I had three more batteries that needed to be charged, these are 2200 milliamp hour batteries. I can plug these in. Again, now these are three cells, which is fine. This can do four cells on this side, and this can do three cells on this side, or you could have six cells over here and one cells over there. It doesn't matter from side to side. It only matters per the balance board. We got our last one plugged in here. Now we get all three main power leads plugged in. Now we'll plug in the balance leads. Always making sure we plug in, in this case, the three cell balance leads. Now, so these are three cells. I have a total of 2,200 milliamp hours for each cell. So that's a total of 6,600 milliamp hours or 6.6 .6 amps charging at 1C. So I'll press start here. Increase that to 6.6 .6 amps. Oops, there we go. And we need to put this down on three cell. There we are. Press start. Confirming it's three cell. There we go. So this is saying that the the battery voltage on these three these three packs is 11.29 volts. You'll see the charge current come up, ultimately getting to 6.6 .6 amps and this is the amount of milliamps that are being put in to the batteries. You see over here just in the last you know almost four minutes we've put in over 300 milliamp hours of charge. So as you look at all these batteries and, and further realize as we saw on the computer that for three cells that the max charge current capability is, is 12 amps and we're putting in 
around six right now so that's to say that you know for I could put in twice as many batteries here on the 3S side for maybe a total of six 2200s and then over here on the on the four cells that that the on a four cell charge you know this charger has the capability of putting out nine amps so you know I could probably put another three batteries over here um, in addition to the four I've already got so you would have somewhere on the order of 12 to 13 batteries um, being able to charge you know, around this size all, all at the same time so when you start thinking about that and how valuable your time is and when you use a smaller charger that might only be capable of charging one to two batteries um, the value of a more powerful charger like this you know really starts to show itself and thinking about you know less time charging more time at the field more time flying you know with this number of batteries you know and a powerful charger like this I can fly almost continuously I'd much rather put my money into a decent charger that's capable like this one um, as compared to, to something less expensive that I'm gonna be waiting on all the time so with that that concludes my review of the hobby mate dual channel charger I highly recommend this charger it has all the capabilities that you would ever expect and plenty of power to allow you to do charging like this.